How many of you got Valentine gifts you actually like? Oh yeah, I got some chocolate covered strawberries. You know I like my belly, so that was good. Um, and then next week, she probably can buy me a gym membership. All right. So, all right, we're continuing on spiritual renewal. And uh, the last two weeks or two Sundays or whenever it was we spoke, we talked about step one was building or renewing a relationship with God the Father, correct? And everyone ticked that off and they said they had plans in place. Every one of you had plans in place, your detailed notebook on how you plan to increase your relationship with the Lord. Every morning at 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, you get up and read the scriptures, right? And from 6 to 6.30, you pray, or vice versa, right? No? I see a lot of crickets. I hear crickets. Anyway, we're in that process of building our relationship and getting to know God all over again. And the second one was almost extra hard. Building our relationship with each other. Building our relationship with God is one thing. Building it with the neighbor and the, the brothers and sisters, especially church people, right? But we talked about believers and non-believers. It's very important that we build our relationship with that, with those persons. So I hope everyone made amends. You restored some relationship. How many of you restored some relationships from last week or last month? You're working on it. All right, you're working on it. Good, good. It's, it's a work in progress. All right. Let's not make it like a 10-year plan. Let's make it like a six-week plan. And today, what I want to talk to you about is, is, a, is going a, a little deeper than the surface because many Christians, not in this church, of course, but many Christians out there are above the surface Christians, and we want to get below the surface. We want to dig a little deeper to get down into what Christianity is, is all about. How many prepared to go a little deeper? Just a little. All right, below the surface. All right, good. So step three for you, which you will all do by next youth Sunday, and we'll have this down pack, is knowing God's heart and loving what God loves. Now, how many of you can see your heart? You can see the heart? No, right? You have to, that's underneath the surface, so that's not easily visible. So knowing God's heart is not necessarily easy to detect. So who wants to get a little bit into knowing God's heart? That is important to know. Now, it is a month of love and there's some gift giving. Um, who can relate to this picture up here? There's a young man and a young woman. Marvin said he could relate. This man on the left-hand side, he's getting what? Now who say ugly sweater? You all don't talk about people things like that. He's getting a sweater that he seems to not appreciate to the fullest, as the women would say. You cannot appreciate what I did to make this sweater for you. All right? So, fellas, if you ever get one like this, please don't fix your face like that. You can get in trouble. All right? And see, on the women, on the, you see what she got? She got an iron. Now, what's wrong with that? I think that's very practical. Now... If anyone ever gave their significant other a, uh, or a female um, an iron or some cleaning, you're cleaning utensil, how did that go? Did that go all right? <laughs> it probably didn't go too good because what happens is, and this is going to help some of you in your relationships, see, she is giving him something that she likes. Yeah, but then she likes that. And see, she is trying to put something on him that pleases her. And not him. You know, Ray, we ain't going out in the we ain't going out like that. No. Right? And he is giving her something that she could do for him. She said, okay, I need my clothes, extra iron, so let me give her this iron so she can make sure my clothes are crispy. Right? Like when these young people go to school, their iron, their their pants can stand up without anything. It's crispy. So each one of them are giving gifts to each other to serve their own purpose. And many times we do that as believers. We give gifts to God based on what we think we should give him. So sometimes we try to please him. And it, oh, this is very surface level. And by reading our Bible. Now you may say, hey, Brother Billy, reading our Bible, that's what God wants, right? Or by going to church or church attendance. 
I just want you to know that all these things are very surface level. All right? Or by singing in our worship or dancing or using our gifts to, to please the Lord, these are very surface. I want you to know. By fasting, by giving offering and by praying and by our accomplishments, these are surface level things. Why do I say they're surface level? Because in themselves, they bring no glory to God. In themselves, by themselves, they bring no glory to God and they're not pleasing to God. How many of you have watched I, this? This is the big breakup. How many watch this? This is Jennifer Aniston and this is Vince Vaughn and they're having this big fight about what? Washing the dishes. So she's trying to get him to wash the dishes. They had a long day. It was time to go to bed. He's in his front room playing video games on the couch, chilling, playing video games. She's really um, exhausted and she, the, the kitchen is full of dirty dishes. And they get into a big argument and he's finally, you know, he gets up like how some of us do. as hus No, not us, but, but, I, but other husbands and children, right? After nagging and nagging and nagging, some of these husbands go and wash the dishes and the children as well. So, so the character, the gentleman here, he says, okay, fine, I'll wash your dishes, man. And she says, tell you what, guess what? Don't, don't worry about it. So you know that was a very complicated item matter. Because he says, didn't you want me to wash dishes? And she says, I don't want you to wash the dishes. I want you to want to wash the dishes. So he is totally confused like us, we would be. Why would I want to wash the dishes? That makes no sense to me. What was, see, he was still looking at it from a surface level. Why did she want him to want to wash the dishes? Because washing the dishes was a sign of the affection he had or should have to water, where she wouldn't have to wash the dishes after a long day. Nobody likes washing dishes. Come on, except Nana, right? Because she liked to clean. But anyway, nobody likes washing dishes. However, the point of the matter was I want you to wash dishes because I want you to, to want to do the things that make me happy. Not just doing it, because if he'd gone to do it and he grumbled and he washed the dishes, that would have not been the point. So what makes God happy? Yeah, as David, remember, David was a man after what? God's own heart. And guess what? As believers, we should seek to be believers after God's own heart as well. All right? And we said it's below the surface. Now, on the surface, does reading the Bible please God? Do you know that there's a lot of scholars who read the Bible who are not Christians? There are scholars, there are many people who read the Bible, they have knowledge for days. They are, not, they are not in a relationship with the Lord. So reading the Bible in itself does not bring pleasure to God. All right? Let's go on to this voice here. John chapter 14, verse 15, it says, If you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. Trust me, in the church, there's no shortage of knowing the word of God, especially this church, right? There's no shortage of knowing what is wrong and what is right. Every one of you here, if you've been here for a year or more, you should know what is, have an idea of what is right and wrong. So there's no shortage of us knowing what the Bible says. He, is, he takes pleasure in us obeying what the Bible says, right? So there's no benefit for us if we read it and ignore it. He takes pleasure in us obeying what the word says. And it goes on to say, if anyone loves me, he will keep my commandment, my word. This is, a, is an expression of your love for him. Obeying his word. And he says, my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. If you obey him, if you read and you obey, right? He says he will come and he will have a family with you, basically. All right? Come to fellowship with you. You all understand the difference? And it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. How many, there are many people who know the Bible, who have not shared it. How many people who have read the Bible many times over, but unfortunately they were not able to share it with someone to, to reconcile or to get someone into the kingdom. Isn't that a shame? How many of us here today have read the Bible for years and years and years? How many can we say, don't raise your hand, but how many can we say we have shared it with, the, with someone and they've received the Lord? That's a rough question. And I know for many years I could say zero 
or maybe one. All right, but God's heart is for the lost, and His heart is for us not to read the Bible, but to obey the Bible and to share it with others. Reading the Bible is surface level. Obeying and sharing the Bible is below the surface. You all understand what I'm saying? How many of you come week after week to Youth Sunday or to, to, to Youth Church or to Adult Church, and when you go to a week, nobody knows that you're a Christian? Nobody can say they encouraged me with the word of the Lord. They shared the word of the Lord. They asked me about my soul and they shared the way of salvation to, 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 to their co-workers or friends or family. The Bible is not to be read alone. The Bible is to be applied and shared. And this is where we start to get a little in, into below the surface Christianity. And for many years, I've lived above the surface Christianity, reading the Bible, memorizing scripture, but it stayed right here. So I was guilty for many years, but don't feel bad. If you feel a conviction, that means the Holy Spirit wants to take you deeper. And that's what we're all about here, getting deeper into the word. Right, so what about, hey, what about these scriptures that say, hey, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth? How many of you heard this as a child? I would meditate on it day and night. That's all good. But what does the rest of the verse say? So that you may be careful to do all according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Reading and meditating on it day and night is in vain if you don't apply it, if you don't obey it, and if you don't share it. You read scripture in vain. You meditate on it in vain. Oh, so what about study to show thy pros, thyself approved? How many of you heard that one? Oh yeah, study to show thyself approved. Yes, a good workman. Because this is about doing the work of ministry. A good workman needs to not be ashamed and rightly know how to divide and accurately handle the word of truth. This is in direct context to ministry. It is not just study the word, oh, study the word, show yourself a proof. That's all good. But this is for workmen, this is for soldiers in the army of Lord, because we go out to preach and to share and to do the work of the, of, of the ministry. Not to study just to show. See, we leave it like that. Oh, study the word, show yourself a proof. Right? Study the word and you're good. No. That is not where the period is. It continues. We are not to study the word and leave it there. All right? That is going to church, please, God. Oh, boy, this is going to be toughy, right? You know rocks in the building, right? That's going to church, please, God. Because we sell it a lot. Right? So, look at this relationship here. These two here are in a relationship. They go to dinner. They text somebody else. They're not texting each other. And they just get some water and leave. Is that really a date? There's no what? Fellowship. And there's no sustenance of food. Many of us come and we don't fellowship. And we don't retain the food that we get. We come, we come empty and we leave empty. Right? We come, we sit in our corner, we listen, and then we leave. Right? The famous verse that is, also, that is always print, that, that, that is always cited, what is it? Everybody knows it. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves with one another, or you can go to hell. Well, that please I added, but that's not what it says. <laughs> Let us con listen. Let's look at the context of the verse. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. This is the purpose. All right, we are supposed to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to be together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. There's a purpose to fellow the coming and meeting together to encourage people in love. All right, to stir up good works. Right? Do we do that? Or we just come to church and we say, oh, once we enter the building, we can take that off. Go on to church. Surface level Christianity. We want to go deeper now. We want to go deeper, young people. Y'all clan this? Now, our young people, I must say, they like the fellowship. Yeah. They like the fellowship. And that is one of our themes for since we started. We say we want to promote fellowship. 
That's why we do, we try and do a lot of outings. We, we have little games for them to get to know each other. We like to go to eat because fellas, that's where the fellowship is eating, right? Yeah. And then when we have our Bible study, between that we have some donuts. That is not because we want y'all to get fat like me. It's because we want fellowship. That is the purpose of this, this church. That is the purpose of church. I heard left, right, and center, man, I could get the word home to preach it on TV better. That may be very true. But there's no fellowship on TV. If you hear the voices on TV and they hail you back, you better check that TV. All right? They may encourage you, but do you encourage them? All of us have to use our giftings to encourage and edify one another. That's why he gave it to you and not you. That's why everyone doesn't have every gift. Or one person do have all the gifts. Because we need to depend on each other for our edification. Now the singing in church bring glory to God. Is that pleasing? This one must be good. This must be pleasing to God. I, it's got to be one of the three, right? This is some of us right here, right? Oh, it'd be so deep in worship. You see the eyes closed? Deep in worship. You see what they're thinking about, right? Y'all can see that? This, is be, this used to be me many times. I wonder what mommy called curry because today is Sunday. Daddy like curry. I hope this is a curry day. Yes! And that curry better be home ready. So most of the time in church as a young boy, I think about what mommy cook. Some of us, this praise and worship really long today. Hey, well, mado. Some of you are so guilty right now. So guilty. I wonder who all gaming online now. Who's thinking about Fortnite today? Don't lie. About fire? Free fire. Free fire? See, you're guilty in church. I'm glad you're telling the truth. But there's some of us right here, and I wouldn't even talk about adults. They worry, but who Bill? Who Bill do on Monday? Mother, that check and clear. Right? Did I leave the oven on? Mother, my things I got to iron. I got to go to the wash house. Everything. And that's how we are. We supposed to come here to holy. You know what holy means? Consecrated. So holy means set apart. So when we come here, we're supposed to set apart our minds and our thoughts and our heart and say, hey, I come to worship you, Lord. I, I set apart all the other bad stuff in my life, the worries. I just come to you. My thoughts are on you. That is what holy means, set apart. It says, these people honest me, talking about the Pharisees. And I hope it's not any of us in here. These people honest me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. So this shows you that worship can be in vain. Many of us sing and, and worship and dance and do skits and, and beat the drum and play the piano and, and play the, the violin and the flute or whatever it is. But we do it for different reasons than to honor God. Of course, there's none of us in here. But it says the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And it talks about this is the kind of worship that the Father is seeking in spirit and in truth. So worshiping him in spirit and truth is what pleases God. That's below the surface. Right? Now, does giving, praying, and fasting, of course, these, these give glory to God. He's pleased with these things, right? He has to be. For me to give a pizza for a whole week, I mean, that's plenty of sacrifice in Bernard. Whatever it is for you, you know? For giving, for praying, for fasting. Is it pleasing? How many think it's pleasing? I think by now you've figured out that these may be some trick questions, right? All right. So in terms of giving, it didn't say God loves a giver. He said God loves a what? A cheerful giver. That means not under reluctancy or, or under compulsion. How many of you have been given offering because you think you could be cursed? Because if you don't give your tithe or your offering, you could be cursed. That's compulsion. How many, how many believe that you give an offering because you want to be blessed? You want to be blessed. I want that Mustang. Right? We were discussing this music video by one of the new young Christian rappers, and they had one nice, what it was, Ferrari? What? Where's that? Sell no. There's a nice red, I ain't got no names, can I leave with the people, but the car was a nice red car. <laughs> but it was about, he said he ain't got to worry because he getting his blessings because he putting his offering in. So you drop that tide, 
bling bling, right? Isn't that how it works? That didn't have work for me. I didn't get a Mustang. And it says, this is a summary of Matthew chapter 6, when it talks about these spiritual disciplines. It says, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. So when we do these things that we call Christianity, surface level Christianity, when we do them and practice them before people will be seen, it says, hey, that's fine, but just you're not getting a reward from your Father. All right? So when you, it says, when you give and pray and fast, do it in secret. Right? Test your heart. Will you do it in secret? And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So sacrifice from a pure heart is what pleases God. Not fasting, not praying, not giving. But the pure heart sacrifice is what pleases God. You give all you want. You can sell your body to be burned. Right? You give all to the poor. But if it isn't out of love, what happened? It's in vain, right? And lastly, there are two things that I just want to end with. There's two things that God really loves. All right? Restoration of his people. So for those who were, who were right with God and we... We got some distance. We, we, we fell apart. He loves restoration. That's number one. And I saw this. I read this verse and I studied it a little bit. Not too much. But this verse. You remember this verse with Peter when he says. When, when God asked. Sorry. Jesus asked Peter. said. Do you love me? How many, how many times did he ask him that? Three times. And they were by, this is after, he appeared to them just a third time after he appeared, after he rose from the dead. And they were by the sea, and they were trying to catch fish, but it was, they wasn't getting any fish. So he shouted out, put it on the next side. And they had 153 large fish they pulled up. So they brought it ashore, and they were by the fire. So you may not, you may not pick up on these little things. They were by the fire roasting these fish. And Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? Some commentators pick up on this. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? Where was it? In the front of the fire. So he was bringing back the symbolism here. Peter's there sitting by, when he denied him, he's out there trying to get warm while Jesus is being crucified. He denied him three times after promising he would go to prison from him. He would do this for him. And he denied him three times. And, and Jesus even said, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. But I pray that your faith will remain. And when you return, you strengthen your brothers. And you see, this is at the end. This is right before Jesus goes and he ascends. He restores Peter. He said, you didn't. he didn't say it, but he denied him three times. He was calling him back, saying, do you love me? Do you love me? And on the third time, Peter got mad, but he didn't probably realize what was happening. And he said the third time, do you love me? Of course I love you, Lord. I think, and many commentators believe that he was restoring Peter because he had fallen from his denial. And he was saying, I welcome you back. As you denied me three times, you now affirm me three times in the front of the fire. And then he gave him the commission to go and feed my lambs. Right? Shepherd my sheep and feed my sheep. He entrusted him now to him and said, this is a great commission I've given you. Not the great commission just to Peter, but this is, this is what he's saying. He restored Peter after the great fall of denial. For those of you who have fallen, he wants to restore you. He wants to restore you back and entrust you with his, with, his, with his treasures and with his gospel again. And lastly, the repentance of sinners, those who have not received the Lord as yet. Oh, as, is, as it said, I tell you there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Then over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. This is what brings God joy. Repentance of sinners. Do we have that love and passion 
for the loss for him do we share his heart in this how many persons have we witnessed to in the last year if we've not witnessed any then we don't share that passion with the lord we don't have the heart of the lord because if his heart is so passionate for those to repent and we do not preach a gospel of repentance or share the gospel of repentance we are not we do not have the same heart that the father has and we need to pray and I've, I, and I've done it. I've, I've not always had this passion for the loss. And it took for me to pray and ask God, give me that passion, give me that passion. First, I have to reconcile myself, right? Like, like when you get on the plane, they say, put your mask on first. And then put the mask on your dependence. So we, after we get ourselves together, we need to, to look at sharing the gospel. And this is the last scripture here. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is what? A new creation. The old has passed away and behold the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ his son reconciled us to himself and gave us what? He gave us the ministry. He entrusted us the ministry of reconciling. That is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their or our trespasses against us, and then entrusting us the message of reconciliation. This is what he wants us to be doing. He even entrusted that to his people. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are his representatives on this earth. Us, right here, for us who call ourselves Christians. God making his appeal through us, we are his vessels to reach the world. So for those of you who, are not, who may not be saved there, we, this church, we implore you on, on the behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So I implore you, we implore you, each one of us, when we go out, we implore the world to accept Jesus, to be reconciled. That is, our, that is the Father's request. So we implore you again to be reconciled to God today. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for forgiving us of our sins. And not only forgiving us, but entrusting us with this message of reconciliation, the good news of your Savior who brings eternal life. For those who are not saved today, who have not been reconciled to the Father, we implore you today, let this be the day that you are reconciled to him and enter into everlasting covenant with him, an everlasting relationship with him, an everlasting life with him. If that is you today and you, you feel the drawing of the spirit, it is not my fancy words, but it's the drawing of the spirit. I want you to slip your hand up today so we can pray for you. I see that hand. I see that hand. God loves you. As, he, as it said, if he saw the one sheep out of the 99 and he left them just for me, just for you. So be reconciled with him today. I see that hand. I want to implore you to just stay behind as we pray. We'll pray for you and we'll guide you through the process of reconciliation. Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for restoring us who have fell and entrusting us with your good news and your message. We thank you so much. We ask your blessings on the people here today, your people. We ask that you would take us deeper as Christians and not be surface-minded Christians, but be deeper. Go beyond the surface and seek and seek and seek your heart for us and, 
And may we have the same heart and desire for the loss that you have. We ask these things in your son's precious name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen, everyone.